In Utopian Road to Hell, there are three main points. First of all, I define what utopianism is, and it isn't a matter of, of just communism, which people uh, have this idea that this all started with Karl Marx. The reality is there were Chinese societies that attempted this hundreds of years ago with devastating uh, results. There was the French Revolution, which uh, uh, the violence and the murder and, and the death, but it goes back further. It goes back to, uh, to Sparta. Sparta was the absolute utopian society. For instance, the example of how the children were taken care of in, in the Spartan society, uh, that was uh, Hillary Clinton's It Takes a Village. Uh, because the, the, the families couldn't. You go back and look at the writings of Plato. He was the first great promoter of the concept of creating a, a, an ordered society in which there was no competition, no need for money. And by the way, Sparta had no money. Uh, you know, this is why they couldn't trade with anybody. People had, had little iron uh, uh, tokens. There was no silver, no gold. It was that utopian society. It was devastating uh, to, uh, uh, to the people. So this has been a theme. This utopian concept has been there for thousands of years. And uh, people, people say, well, the difference, you know, the communists and the fascists don't like each other. Wait a minute, these were both utopianists. Adolf Hitler was no less a utopianist than, than Joseph Stalin. They just had different methods to, in, to create their utopia. Uh, Adolf Hitler was gonna create this per third right in which there's gonna, there's gonna be plenty for everybody, of, of course, except for the people they killed in order to get it. And Joseph Stalin uh, was continuing the creation of the utopia brought about by Lenin on the basis of Marx's philosophy, which Marx probably stole from Plato and to a degree Thomas More. That's the other point the utopian road to hell makes, is that this doesn't work and it always ends in violence. It always ends in violence. No matter how, you take Bernie Sanders and, and his saying, we're gonna have democratic socialism, democratic socialism. Well. There's eventually people, people don't want to give up what they have. And then you have to forcibly take what, what they have. Uh, many of these systems originally came into existence where it, it was going, oh, well, you know, we're going to be able to, 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 to have this, this equality. But the reality is eventually in order to try to get it to work, they had to use brute force. The current example is Venezuela. Uh, Chavez and his political party came to power through a democracy, and they were going to have democratic socialism. Now they have 200% inflation a year. The opposition leaders are in jail. Uh, people disappear in, in the middle of the night. The unemployment rate is staggering. This was a nation, the Latin American nation, with the largest middle class in all of Latin America, larger than, than uh, percentage-wise than, than Chile. And th this economy, which was oil rich and everything, was destroyed by this concept. You know, we talk about uh, electricity is rationed in Venezuela. Well, hello, it's free. It's free. I, how, how can you possibly uh, control how much somebody uses of something if the product is totally free? I can't remember what the price of gas is, but I think it's a dime or 15 cents a gallon, far below the cost of refining it because this is what the people should pay. And it is that, that imaginary utopian concept that no matter how democratic it starts out with, it always winds up with brute force. The extreme example of that was Pol Pot in Cambodia who murdered what? 40% of the population in, because he thought, oh, the reason it didn't work in, in Russia is because uh, there were too many intellectuals and too many people knew about capitalism. And the reason it didn't work in Cuba is the same reason. And the reason it didn't work in China. So I know what to do. I'll just kill everybody. I'll kill everybody that wears, speaks a foreign language. I'll kill everybody that plays a musical instrument. I'll kill everybody that, that wears glasses. You know, uh, and, and I'm gonna get down to a true proletariat so that we can have a truly equal society uh, in which there is no need. Of course, he murdered all the productive people. He murdered all the doctors. He destroyed the gene pool of the country, which, by the way, is what Russia did to some degree. Uh, you know, just basically turned the country into uh, a total basket case. Venezuela he hasn't gotten that bad yet. Maybe the people, it's smaller. Maybe the people can get their way back. But because uh, when you look at these examples, you say, well, this couldn't happen in America. It couldn't? 
It couldn't. Uh, it couldn't happen in France. It couldn't happen in Germany. It happened once in Germany when Germany was absolutely at, at its height. Of, uh, they, they were the center of intellectualism and science in the world when they slipped into this utopian dream of fascism. So the idea that we could have some uh, democratic force uh, come to power uh, and to create a utopian state in America to where everybody's medical bills are taken care of, everybody's education bills are taken care of. And by the way, the one thing that always comes to mind when I listen to this is, all right, 60% of the, of the population never goes to school. Why are they going to have to pay for all these people to go to college so that they can earn more than they do? It is all part of that utopian dream. You're going to give everybody a college education. Nobody's going to have to do anything except press button, type on a keyboard, you know. Uh, I, I still can't figure out who's supposed to pick up the trash in this, this, this utopian society. But those are the main, the main points. And of course, the final one being that I just used is that it can happen here. And it can happen through a democratic process. It doesn't have to come about through violent revolution.